Hi, this is Geometry Chapter 7-4. We're investigating similarity in right triangles. So I have the, the figure on this opening page that we're going to work with. We have a right triangle, and we're going to drop an uh, altitude. And then you're going to find out that this little triangle and this medium-sized one and the big one are all similar. They are proportional. They are the same shape. I drew a right triangle, and I dropped an altitude down from this vertex to this base. So that's a right angle there. And then what I did is I cut, a, I cut out those two smaller triangles that are part of that large right triangle. And the goal of this video is to show you that all three triangles are similar, proportional to each other, same shape, not the same size. So if we take out this little pink triangle for a moment and leave this medium size one, you'll see that it's quite obvious that this angle is congruent. You know, it's the same angle, it's shared. So by reflexive property, that's congruent. We have a right angle here. You have a right angle for this large triangle. So you'll see by angle-angle similarity theorem, the two triangles have to be similar. Or let's just think in these terms that if this angle is congruent to that angle, this right angle is congruent to this right angle, then the third angles have to be congruent to each other. And they are. We can slide this over and see it is. OK, so we're done with that triangle for now. Take the little baby one here. Look, we have that shared angle here, reflexive property. And of course, we have a right angle and a right angle of a large triangle. So then uh, the third angles have to be congruent. So I'm going to flip this over. And you'll see that when I slide this over, see it is congruent. OK. And then now let's put all three together and show that they're the same shape. See, there's the medium size one. And there's the small one. So there you go. All three triangles are proportional. They are similar. And now, OK, now I'm back to this image then. So we have this right triangle, ACB. There's the altitude, CD. And then I color coded. I colored the small triangle yellow, this medium triangle blue. And then I moved them into the same orientation. So we have this little triangle, the medium one, and this large triangle. And all of the corresponding sides, well, I have them. I have the ratios all listed here at the bottom here. So AD, look, short leg, CD, short leg. And for this other triangle, the short leg, AC, they are all going to be the um, same ratios. So now I got you know this longer leg, DC, DB, and CB listed. And the hypotenuse is AC, PC, uh, CB, and AB. More importantly is we're going to look at this as a a fractions ratio. So look, I have a leg AD over DC right there, and CD over DB, and AC over CB. And they are all going to be equal to each other because they're proportional. And then this set of uh, fractions here is where I have um, leg and the hypotenuse. Leg and hypotenuse, leg and hypotenuse. They're all listed here. Let's move on. I'm going to do a math problem. So I took this image. I filled in some values in here and some variables. And I took all that information and placed it appropriately in the triangles to the right. So look, and they're all oriented the same, uh, the right angles in the bottom left corner for each and every one of them. Anyway, let's, solving for x, um, you, you look at the triangles, and you find where the variable x is. And, and you're looking for numbers. You're looking to set up a ratio where you're only working with one variable, one letter. So here's x over 16. And then that corresponds to 25 over x. And then we cross multiply and get the x squared. And then the 16 times 25. And then you take the square root of both sides. And I picked numbers that were easy to take square roots of for this first problem. So you take the square root of 16, you get 4. Square root of 25, you get 5. Multiplication is what's taking place here. So it's simply 20. Um, to make the algebra teachers happy, I threw the plus minus in front of the square root symbol. Because when you take the square root of x squared, you're really having to pay attention to a positive and a negative answer. But in geometry, we only deal with positive distance. So we throw out that negative value. 
So we're going to deal with um, you know just positive 20. Let's move on. Solving for y. See, look, y and 9 corresponds to 16 and y. So I set it up as y over 9 is equal to 16 over y. Cross multiply, you get y squared is equal to 16 times 9. And you can take the square root of 16 and 9, which is 4 and 3, and there's multiplication. So it's y is equal to 12. Let's go for z. So z, z and 9 correspond with 25 and z. So I set it up that way. You know, z over 9 is equal to 25 over z. Cross multiply, you get z squared is equal to 25 times 9. And the square root of 25 is 5. The square root of 9 is 3. So z is 15. That was an easy problem. Let's do one that's a little more challenging. So problem two, I put in values that, you know, they're not going to work out quite so pretty. So I took all this information, this triangle, I put it all in the corresponding triangles to the right, that information, and notice that I have x plus 16 for the hypotenuse of the large triangle. So let's solve for uh, x. I didn't, I didn't um, highlight it, but uh, x, let's see, we've got this, x plus 16 over 18, and then, oh, we got two pretty numbers right here, 18 and 16, so we're good to go here. So I got, I got the fraction set up. I multiplied both sides by 18 to cancel out that denominator, and then uh, 18 times 18 divided by 16 gives you um, 20.25, and then when you subtract 16 from both sides, you get either 4.25 or this fraction, 17 over 4. Okay, let's get rid of that and move on. So we're going to solve for um, y. So y, let's see, y. You, oh, here you go. You got y and 16, and then you have the, you already, ha we found the value of x in the previous section, so then now we have a number and y to work with. So I got y over 16 is equal to x over uh, y, and then I'm substituting in this value for x in place of that x. So you cross multiply, there's your y squared, you get 16 times that value. 4 into 16 times 7 is going to be 68, so you take the square root of both sides to get rid of this square symbol, because I didn't say before, that square root and that square symbol, they cancel each other. You know, so you're just going to get just a y. So when we go to try to simplify square root of 68, 68 is 4 times 17. And you can take the square root of 4, and that's how the 2 comes out. But then the 17 is still stuck inside the radical symbol, so it's 2 radical 17. Let's keep going. Z's. So let's see. This looks promising. A z and an 18. Oh, there you go, y and 16. And then we just found the value of y right there. So we're going to substitute that value, y, in for y. And then, once again here, I'm multiplying both sides by 18 to clean it up. Here we go. So you got z is equal to 18 times the value of y divided by 16. And that simplifies the um, 9 over 4 times square root of 17. And that's it. Thank you for watching this video.